Welcome back, Crafted Entrepreneurs. Okay, today is a very special guest because she was previously on the show, Mommy Millionaire, five and a half years ago when I first launched the show. She was one of my like newer guests that I had on, and it's actually how we like created a connection and a collaboration. She's the only person that spoke at both of my Mommy Millionaire live events. She's somebody that's very special to me because I like people in my life that keep it real, okay? And if you're somebody that's in the OG Mommy Millionaire crew, you know I'm talking about Tiffany Carter. And I'm so excited to have her on the show because she's really blown up since then, but she hasn't changed in her messaging and just like how authentic and real she is. And it's such a, just a bright like light in my life. So I'm excited to have you on, Tiffany. Thank well, This you. is now Crafted Entrepreneur. I know. We I, have leveled up our game over I here. I mean, I'm still like diehard mommy millionaire, <laughs> but like I'll, I'll, I'll hold it. I, we're going to a different level. I get it. I didn't know I was the only person to speak at both of your event mm-hmm. events that's amazing mm-hmm. I yeah. love that, that well was... you always add so much value and you give so much and I just yeah I mean it's been well, since 2019 but wow that's you know it's scary when you think about how fast time goes by and I can really start spinning yeah. if I get leaned too much into it Mm-hmm. where I'm like, but I have so much left to do. I know. And I'm behind. And then I like really can start spiraling. And yeah. it's like, no, everything is in like God's divine timing, exactly mm-hmm. where we're supposed to be when we're supposed to do it. And I truly feel that's the case for business as well. Mm-hmm. Like I, if my ego was driving everything with business and my first business, which you probably recall that I still have as an eight figure business, that was built all ego, innocently. Mm-hmm. I didn't know yeah, you any don't... different. It was what I was taught. Mm-hmm. And it almost killed me. Like that, you can't keep that up. I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. I was emotionally and spiritually and mentally and physically bankrupt, but financially, right? Making it looked, it. It looked mm-hmm. really good. And I was like, "Is this is what success is? And then we were, there's a lot of messaging around like, you know, like mo money, mo problems, mm-hmm. you know, like, it's lonely at the top, you know, successful people Mm -hmm. have to sacrifice. And that was like shoved down my throat all growing up in school and companies I worked for from my mom. So I was like, well, this is, this must be the only way, right? This is the only way. And I didn't want to, I didn't like the latter. I didn't like the other option of, I looked at everything as so black and white, like, so I could be broke and happy or I could be wealthy and miserable. Like I didn't, I'll take wealthy. I was like, I'll, I, I'll, I'll be rich because I know what it's like to not have money, right. and being rich is like still way better. Yeah, but I couldn't sustain that, and it took me almost losing everything for me to go. There's got to be a different way, and when I simplify it. It's not having my ego lead the way. It's having something greater than myself, like the divine, my heart, like looking within, because my ego is what almost killed me. Well, ego stands for edging God out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're trying to do everything on your own. You're trying to be the person who fixes all the problems that you've ultimately pretty much created, too. And you can't have a different life using that same ego mindset. So that is that that's how Project Me with Tiffany came to be. Yeah, exactly. I I held back on doing the business I really wanted to do from my heart mm-hmm. because I told myself stories like, oh, that's like a passion project. Mm-hmm. Oh, it sounds like a little hobby, you know, and then I kept kicking the can down the road. Like, I'll do it once I have five million in the bank. I'll do it once I have ten million in the bank. Like that'll be like my, you know, little like early retirement business you know Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't know you could make a crap ton of money doing something that you actually love that's fun that feels good it was the opposite of my messaging Mm -hmm. but God forced me to where I didn't have a choice I had to figure out a different way because I could not keep going yep and I had to take that other business of mine down by 90 percent I had to let clients go. I had to let people work for me go. And in order for me to like have a reprieve right. and r- heal and really go, okay, what are we going to do here? Yeah. Like I have to build that back up 
and I have to do something different in a different way. And I didn't know if it would work. Right. Honestly, <clears throat> well, I had no models for it. Mm hmm. Well, and when you first started, it wasn't like it was easy. It wasn't like I have this eight figure success. And so everybody wants to work with me in the coaching space. That wasn't the case. No, I mean, I already had the respect, but that was in corporate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm well known in the medical, you know, pharmaceutical um, health supplement world. Like, so that whole deal. But like no one knew who I was online. I didn't, I didn't. have social media. I didn't know who you were. I was like, who is this Tiffany Carter? <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. I didn't have social media. I didn't know anyone who had a podcast. In fact, like people in my life from business or, you know, just like friends and acquaintances, the few people I told like what I wanted to do, you could tell it was like instant, like not impressed. Yeah. You, you've lost your mind. Like, okay. Like Tiff's really lost it. Or they were like, oh, God, that they, they could see the writing on the wall like, oh, that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because people judge what they don't understand. And I bought in, though, to what mm -hmm. they said, which is why it took me so long to start this mm -hmm. is because the last thing I wanted to do was put my time and energy and money towards something that I didn't think had a solid shot of paying off. Yeah. There's nothing that irritates me more than wasting like my own precious time and I didn't have that much energy to give you didn't feel good you're, right you're, yeah so I wasn't going to waste more time or my little energy doing something I had to know I had to see that there was like a strong shot and I saw it but it was like a little tiny glimmer <laughs> way at the end mm -hmm. but the dream and the vision never left me and I know there's people listening right now who have the vision of a book, a vision of a podcast, a vision of a business, a vision of a jewelry line, you know, a vision of, you know, helping people, you know, heal from, you know, uh, nutritional stuff. You know, there's so many people who have these thoughts and dreams. They've had them for not even a couple months. If you've had it for years, that's in there for a reason. Right. And that's what made me do it. It was like. I wouldn't have had this idea and this vision if I wasn't supposed to do something with it. Right. And that's all I had going for me, really. Just a little bit of hope. That's really, and I had no choice. <laughs> Something's got to change. I was still like making money from my other business. And so a lot of people will go, well, yeah, it's like you didn't start from scratch. I used my other business as an investor, mm -hmm. right, to start my new business. So did I, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but guess what? My first business, no one would give me a loan, and I used all credit cards. I had nothing. And you know, I have one living relative, and we're no contact. It's not like I have a wealthy Somebody father, you could call, yep. or I could, like, get Uncle Joe to, like, throw me, like, 20 grand, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't have that. Well, I think that's really important to point out, because people get really stuck in their victim. They get really stuck and here's all the things I don't have and here's all the things why, like all the reasons why it's not going to work for me. And you're like, here's all the reasons why it wasn't supposed to work for me either. But I did it anyway. That's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Like acknowledge it. It's okay to yeah. acknowledge everyone has a set of limitations and everyone has like, I call it like a leg up. Yes. You know, like I, I was born with a lot of privilege. I was born in a wealthy family in a wealthy neighborhood and I had... Um, prep school like private high school paid for private college but you know my story I was being abused every single day and my mom was pimping me out that's insane so I, we all have both I know my story is like extreme but it's like we all have both things some people are naturally just really brilliant and sharp and get it like some people are really book smart. Some people are great communicators like yourself. Like everyone has their thing and everyone has stuff that's holding them back. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. have a choice to make. Like, okay, yes, this happened to me. And anyone would go, I understand, Tiffany. Like it makes so much sense why, why you're on welfare. I mean, right. everybody. Honestly, yeah. everyone would. Out of anybody, you deserve it. Yes. Would say stuff like, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, like, I get that. But how do I feel at the end of the day? Like, that's not empowering. Mm -hmm. Like, then that's not your story. And that's like, a, to me, that's like a waste of life. It's actually in my going real deep with this. And I know Let's I can go. say this on your show. Like, I think it's a big F you to God. Mm -hmm. 
I would agree with that. It's like, oh, I have these gifts and yes, I've been given, right? I've been given hurdles as we all have. But because of that, I'm not going to rise above and do anything with it. Mm -hmm. Like, No, you're here for a purpose. If you're still alive right now and you're breathing, you have a big purpose. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I will give it six months and I needed just some traction. When I say some, I like qualifying it because you know how much it irritates me when people are like, I tried doing this and no one bought for me and no one signed up. And I'm like, well, how many times did you mention it? And how often are have you been doing all the things? It's like a couple times for two months. And I was like, no, um, that's not die hard believing Mm -hmm. in your thing. Like Mm -hmm. that wouldn't work for you being a music artist. That wouldn't work for you being a skier. That wouldn't. I mean, would you tell your kids that? Right. I just don't think people like hear themselves. They sound absolutely wild. Well, people have become so enabled by their just peers around them that have said, like, don't try. Like, I really think that people surround themselves with enablers that keep them in their comfort zone because it makes everybody feel good to stay the same and nobody has to change. Right. So if people are hanging out with people that are like, oh, yeah, you tried. I saw you post that. I'm so proud of you. What happened? Nothing. You know, it's I don't think it's going to work. I don't have that it factor then they just, yeah, you know what? It's it's so saturated anyway. You shouldn't do it, right? And then moving on. And it doesn't work because you're not hanging out with people like this. Like, And this is why people have to invest in coaches and mentorship because you have to have somebody in your life that's going to be like, but how many times? Like, did you die? You know? No. Then keep going. And I noticed that how we roll, because we're the opposite mm-hmm. of enabling, a lot of people who come to me are like, I've been following you for two years. Yep. I've wanted to work with you, but I was scared because they know when they come to people like us, they're going to have to change. You've got to, sh- you, you got to show up. That yep. doesn't mean it's like mean and nasty or anything like that. It's just like, you can't hide when you hire people that don't let you hide who actually really care about you. Right. The people who, don't care and I'm including coaches I'm including consultants I'm including healthcare practitioners Mm -hmm. who don't care they're going to tell you what you want to hear or they're not going to say anything at all because it's easier that way I'm willing for people to be upset with me yeah and I've upset people people who pay me even though I say it with kindness you know but firmness sometimes Mm -hmm. they don't want to hear the truth they don't want to hear that well then I'm not the right person Well, I tell people like when they hire me as a coach, I'm like, you're not going to like me most of the time. And like, because I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to call you higher. Like, I'm not here to make you feel good about yourself in your current condition. I'm here to take you here. Yeah. You know? And so anytime, and I'll sometimes find myself as a coach. I don't know if you find yourself, like you get comfortable, especially when you've worked with people for years. You start to get a little bit comfortable and I'll have to like do a boundary check because I'm like, whoa, do I, am I holding back right now because I really care that this person continues to like me Mm. right like or do I really want to see them grow and if I really want to see them grow I got to tell them this how it always comes out of my mouth is I've hesitated on sharing this with you but it would not be right or fair for me not to because you're paying me and even people who don't pay me who are in my life if you that's why I come if I have a question I've come to you you've come to me because yep. you'll serve it straight yeah you I want have it, people like I that. want it served straight mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like I don't and I don't want circle talk I don't that I don't have time for that a lot of people do that I notice online and their marketing okay, explain what circle talk is circle talk is saying a whole lot of nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it happens in every profession uh-huh, uh-huh. I've I've worked with lawyers who do it I've worked with accountants who do it I've worked with doctors who do it and it's just a whole lot of nothing but it's said so well politicians are notorious yes, for it yes and you're like well it's like you're almost mesmerized you're like it sounds really good and I'm enchanted but like it actually said nothing whatsoever. Right. Like I've learned nothing at all. And there's a lot of people that are in, in my opinion, in the online education space, in the online influencer space, in the online expert coaching space 
who have this persona it was like the that initial grouping of people yeah you know that end up being almost like a PR version of themselves and they their sales I know for a fact are like way down you can see when you're looking at their accounts their engagement is down people are sick of that they don't want that anymore we are fried well I think what happened and and tell me if you agree with this or whatever you think when the pandemic hit I think everything shifted for a lot of people like and what we enjoy what matters to us uh, like the pandemic was so hard, but it also is like su- has been such a gift because it's cut out a lot of the noise. Like I'm like, oh, I don't need all of this stuff and I don't need people to follow online that are giving half truths, that are gatekeeping, that really are only here for the money and the numbers and the vanity metrics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I do think something shifted during that time. I think that's probably why like the app like TikTok really took off. Yes. You know, it was like, there's been so much BS and messaging fed to us for not even decades, quite frankly, centuries that have just been passed down from generation to generation. And look at how I ended up with my first business, like Mm -hmm. all the messaging around success and all the messaging around wealth. And I just followed, like I didn't, Puppet, puppet. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't know any better. And I felt like a true awakening is a like is occurring, not even has occurred. It's occurring now. Is everyone going to wake up? Obviously not. Right. But I do think that the people who are awakening were meant to awaken at this time, at this exact time. Ooh, I got the chills mm-hmm. for real. Like this is this is the time. And I can tell you, I know who I know who's going to make it. And not like I'm saying like, oh, I'm the almighty and I have some inside knowledge. You, I feel you can tell the people who are dialed in, the people who are awake, the people who are present, you know who's going to be able to cut it and who's going to be able to rise. And we're making room for more people to have the abundance, to have the freedom in, the, in their lives, to have the happiness, to have the options that they're looking for if they show up right. and do the thing. Yeah. Do the inner work required to integrate all the things that they're awakening to. Yeah. Right? Like we can listen to these podcasts and we can have this epiphany. Like, oh man, what Tiffany said, like, you know, really stuck with me. But what are you going to do with it? Like you got to be the person that's going to. Well, that's what's psychologically so interesting. And I used to do this as someone who's a total overthinker and someone who's medicated for anxiety and complex PTSD it's like I can really live in my head and we can think when we're studying when we're listening when Mm -hmm. we're reading that that means we're making moves towards like building our dream business or you know improving our body or whatever Mm -hmm. your goal is but it's like when I like pin like crock pot recipes and I start laughing like I I, like you're never (laughs) first of all I have a crock pot from like I bought like the state of the art crock pot in like probably 2017. It's in its packaging. Like I have one, I have one spatula and one pan. Like I do not cook, but like I'll get on like a whole thing where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to like do these like crock pot, like low carb recipes. And, and at the moment it can make you feel good. Right. It's like people who buy this time of year. That's why we see all the ads for like exercise equipment yeah, and the programs. Diets and-, and people buy these things because mm-hmm. you can tell yourself the lie. I'm going to do it now. And mm-hmm. it feels like you're taking action. You've actually done nothing. Mm-hmm. This is where you see the perpetual students and the people who are like, oh, I should go back to college or I should go get this certification now and do this program now and do that now. Yeah. And I'm not saying in some cases that isn't helpful or necessary, but if you keep doing one thing after another right. thing after another thing, you're just avoiding because what's vulnerable is actually doing the thing. Mm. Mm. It's terrifying. It's- when I first pressed like well, I didn't press it. My producer did. But when I first like gave my first episode or the first three episodes to go live, terrified, absolutely terrified. Like, yeah, I was like, there's no taking it back. It's happening now. You know, it was it was it scary in the planning phase, the cover, the photo shoot, 
um, even recording the episodes. No, oh, it was exciting. delightful and exhilarating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you actually have to face the music and push, rec- you know, push publish. Yeah. Put it out there to the world. It's been really weird as I wrote this book and um, giving the final copy. Like, and this is it. You cannot make any changes. It's so weird, Tiffany. Like, it's been really hard for me to go like, I reread the book all the time now. And I'm like, oh, I want to add this. And it's like, you can't. Like, it's so it's final. A done, it's done. It's done. Like, and but people aren't even going to have it in their hands for another couple of months. And that's what makes it even weirder. Because you have to sit with this, like going, how are people going to feel about this? You know, but I've just given it to God and just been like, you know what? You ha- this- But you've already written a book before. Yeah, but this is like, that was self-published, you know? Okay. So this is like with a big, uh, you know, head honchos over here that um manage like the whole process and you cannot change it like it's it they own it now too by the way which we can get into a whole tangent about the self-publishing yeah I mean I'm I understand the book thing I talk about it all the time I've I'm being heavily recruited because of my story terrifying I mean terrifying Do you I have an agent terrifying I have worked with two different agents to see who I want to go with my agent's amazing I'm terrified like even the thought of that I'm like oh my god so for me that's my scary thing that we're in an area where I need to stretch now if I never wanted a book out there I don't have you don't have to do that right Right. like but I know I do because I know my story will help people 100% yes and thank god that this is an area you are willing to go first and do it because then I can, can feed yes. off that right yes. I can go you, you know you're like it's scary but like it's safe yeah I think that uh and it's been like two and a half years in the making but I think for you there's been this like really cool evolution for me to watch when you came into the scene and I mean we were both kind of new on the scene at the same time like podcasting yeah. we started around the same yeah. time 2018 yeah. right um or like yeah 2018 and I've really seen your podcast completely blow up. You've recently just like went, I mean, it's been recent on TikTok that you've gone like completely viral. I only started um, TikTok this year mm-hmm. and within, I think it was a two month period, um, I went mega viral with a video that was three years old. Wow. From IGTV. Wow. Mm-hmm. What was it about? Um, You can see it at the top of my page as I have it pinned there so people can see it. I'm in the ocean in Turks and Caicos. Um, But there's lots of people of videos that that are in the water. Right. Um, I think it's because it's not like there's a formula. It was the feeling. It was genuine. Mm -hmm. It was raw. There was no filter. I mean, you guys remember the filters back in the day? They yeah. were terrible. Like, you literally couldn't use them or you'd look crazy. Yeah. Right? On TikTok? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, on Instagram. Like, there's no filter. Like, this yeah. is an old video. Okay. So, okay, like, okay. not cute. It's not like I looked amazing. You always look amazing. Oh, thank you. She has glowing skin, you guys. Thank you. We're going to find out what she uses. Okay. Um, so, it was like, I gave hope and delivered a message from my heart. Mm-hmm. And that's what I mean by people awakening. They're, we're so tired of seeing the BS. We're so tired of the propaganda. We're tired of all of it. We started questioning everything, which mm-hmm. I don't think is a bad thing. No, I think it's great. And I believe that my personality and just that I'm able to show up that way was appreciated and resonated. That's what I think happened. Yeah, I- absolutely. I've went and looked at your TikTok recently before. Like, I was so excited when you came back on the show or when you decided to come back on the show. And I was like looking at it and I'm like, the other thing that you do really well, and I'm sure you know you do this, but I'm going to point it out. You get, um, you start your videos. Okay. And you guys have to go watch this. Do you teach this maybe? Like, I don't know. I'm total, curious what you're going to okay, say. <laughs> she's a total journalist. Okay. Cause back in the day, she used to be like a TV show host. You get people sucked in and it takes you like a good 20 to 30 seconds. Like Mm. I am sucked in. Like I want to know what the answer Mm -hmm. is. And you're like, but I don't know. Like not everybody does this. And Mm -hmm. I don't Mm -hmm. like it's a whole long thing. And then I'm already like, I'm like, okay, tell me what it is, Tiffany. Tell me what like it's naturally how I talk. Like I'm the friend where I I do a large buildup with my stories. Okay. It's amazing. And that is good. But no, no, I some people 
absolutely hate that about me. They're like, they say like things like land the plane. Have you heard that expression? <laughs> yes. All right, Tiff, like land the plane. <laughs> like you've, you've, you know, developed all the characters, right? I can't help it. But like, and when you're telling me a story, like I need to know everything. Like yeah. I want to like everything. And me, I'm to the point. I'm like, okay, here's what happened. Right. Boom. That's, and you're like, what? That's so it's harder for me to do the sh super short form stuff. I have to like really focus to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> I I like going on a whole journey with people. I love it. But I mean, the strategy part of it, yes. Like when you you captivate mm -hmm. and you draw someone in, and naturally how you you talk and build rapport and share stories in real life. Like it would be weird if you knowing your personality and you're blunt and to the point if you went on a whole like long yeah. dance and be like what's happening to Kayla the other okay I am such like a TMI person and I found out it's a trauma response but like when I first meet people I overshare like like a little bit too much I've learned a little bit as I've gotten older to not overshare as much but I'm like right I want to get deep with people like right away like let's talk about your drama right away and um, I'm so lucky you're not single. Can you imagine? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! But I okay. So I met Chase's like long lost cousin. Okay, like had like he hadn't seen her in like his whole entire life, and we like run into her, and she's like, "I'm your cousin," and I was like, "Oh," my. and then she's like, "But yeah, I haven't seen my dad in you know 20 years." I said, "Oh my god, you have to have daddy issues. Do you want to talk about it?" She just completely broke down in tears, and I was like, "Why am I so freaking awkward? Like, why can I not keep it together?" Anyway, but I love what you're doing about like, I'm fine with you not landing the plane because it builds up that anticipation. And I think more people like Tiffany's great at what she does. And a lot of people out there are great at what you do, but you haven't learned how to market yourself in a really powerful way. And that's what you've, you do yeah. really, really well. So I want people to be able to learn some marketing tips from you. Okay. Give us, give us the goods. I would say there's two big things that most people miss and these are with you know multi-billion dollar clients that i work with that have the best so to speak the best the best ad teams products that you guys love i sit on boards i work behind the scenes for many many years one of the companies is well known for an orange colored soap that we've all used in our lives okay so <laughs> my point in saying that is to let you know like it's so it's not like you're an idiot mm -hmm. okay like I have to have these same conversations with large brands and large teams and why it's so important to bring in multiple people and have different yeah. eyes on your business for different perspectives yeah you you know you keep the same people all the time and there's something great about that but you've got to have a fresh perspective on it so number one it's stale Especially if you've been around a while. Yes. And you're, I get sick of myself. Don't you get sick of I yourself? I 100% do. I had to take a break from myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't want any, like, I'm bored. I'm over it. But it's your time to reinvent yourself. In exactly. That moment. Which obviously mm -hmm. you recently did, right? Yeah. It's like, you've been doing something so long and then people can get afraid to repackage it. But look at our favorite, like, makeup lines, skincare lines new and improved packaging there's nothing different about the damn product right and most they just but change the packaging new. yeah I went to go um pick up a perfume for someone um for a gift and I couldn't find it they changed their packaging mm -hmm. it it needs to be revived it's eye-catching it's different um so I would say look at your stuff and see are you really lit up by it like yeah. if you saw it like step outside yourself I don't want you to ask like friends and family because they think you're so cute yeah right and it's even innocent yeah right like there's the, they have that uh like you said like they have that heart for you so it might not even be that they're like pacifying you mm -hmm. you just they love you can do no wrong right and so when people come to me, whether it's a big business or someone's, you know, just starting as a solopreneur, you know, I'll, I say, this is basic. This is flat. It's vanilla. Um, it doesn't stand out. And that's not going to work mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Unless you already have some amazing, well-established brand and your persona such is bigger than life. That and celebrity you can status. Yeah. And listen. I'm blown away, and I'm sure you are too, how many podcasts and books there are out there that, like, 
I would stick a fork in my eye. I can't listen to it. I can't read it. And gazillions of people listen and buy it. I know. I know. And that's, you know, that's okay. Yeah. It's not for me. Those aren't my people. But I think that's also like those, the really, really, um, the ones that have been around for a long time, right? Which I'm not going to name them, but it's, they've become so like it's become their comfort zone almost like they know what they're going to say there's no surprising things that are coming there's no vulnerability or authenticity in the podcast but people kind of if you're staying on the same like grow like plane in your life this feels comfortable to you you know what I'm saying Mm, that's a great point and I think like I listen to your podcast all the time and it it really makes you feel like like you got to see the parts of you that sometimes you don't like You know, and like, I know one time I was like listening and I was like triggered by your podcast because I was like, (gasps) like, I got to deal with something that's coming up by listening to this. And I didn't want to. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to deal with that. I just want my business to grow. Yeah. You know, but sometimes that is the work is like doing those things that we don't want to see. And we have to be willing to like be uncomfortable, you know, and what we're listening to. Yeah. That makes so much sense because it's like how creative and how much inspiration and how much vision can you really have if you're always listening to the same songs, the same artists, the same albums over and over and over again. You're eating the same foods over and over again. You've never traveled to any other places. You keep going to the same place, the same coffee shop, the same everything. Yep. Like we've got to mix up that energy. Yeah. So I make people go do different things. And I mean, it's all within someone's budget, right? Like I make them go take a trip to the mall. You're you can't go to your same restaurants. You need to try a new restaurant this week. Like really shake up that energy. We get so stuck in our comforts. And everyone who I say this to, even when it's like a full marketing team, they'll go, yeah, it's it's boring. It's flat. It reads flat because mm-hmm. if you have an energetic response to your stuff, whether it's a post, a video, a podcast, an offer, and you don't you read flat you, to yeah, it, yeah. why would they be excited? And I know some of us think we can fake it. Okay, people like, can feel it. It's weird. Like, I, and I'm pretty good at faking things. <laughs> I refuse to do it anymore. Just saying, but that idea of having to fake it god that's so much work like it's so much work that's I mean I think of my entire network marketing career and it was you don't realize you're faking it at the time Mm because you're just trying to you're you're just trying your best but it was exhausting after eight years I'm like I can't do this anymore like this I'm not the raw raw person that all these people think I am yeah you know um and but people get comfortable in their fakeness. Well, it's and then, also scary. Well, and they, but they end up with like these autoimmune conditions and mm-hmm. all of these things where their body legit starts to break down because they've suppressed so much of who they are to try to be somebody that they think everybody wants That's them to be. That's what happened to me. That's mm-hmm. when I got sick with my first business, right? Like I had to get sick. God had to make me sick to the point where it was scary to wake me up. Mm-hmm. Our bodies don't lie. Yep. And I would have kept going that way because I would have been too scared to do something different because what I was already doing was working in one way, right? Mm -hmm. It was making me money. I was well known, you know, like in these areas that are kind of like high profile in the corporate world, you know, so my ego like that stuff, but I had to shake things up. So back to the marketing tips. The second thing is fun. Mm-hmm. You're good at this. The more fun you have, the more money you make. And it sounds like a lie. And I can hear people like screaming like <laughs> while listening to this, like, fun, I have to pay my mortgage. Like, fun, like how I have all this going on. How can you have fun? Think of like our most favorite, even like TV commercials or even our most like favorite packaging of makeup lines, mm-hmm. um, even clothing brands why do we gravitate to certain artists and like their creative process and like how they choose to dress and their different looks, you know, for red carpets. Fun. Yeah. That can be infused to any business, even a medical business, you know, within obviously regulatory constraints, but like have fun with it. Mm -hmm. What sounds fun? We lose the fun because then the focus is so much on the growth and then the grind and how can we make this fun again? 
Mm-hmm. And maybe it was never fun for you. So then is this really what you're supposed to be doing or what you thought you had to do that would make money? Yeah. Okay, so most people are chasing the money. And that's actually like the story of why I rebranded from Mommy Millionaire to Crafted Entrepreneur was because I realized I built Mommy Millionaire out of ego because money was such a big deal to me. And I was like, oh, once I figured out how to make money, I want to make sure everybody knows the secret, you know, on how to make it. And what I found was like, I'm not having fun talking about these types of things all the time because it's about so much more than money, you know? And um, anyways, it's been interesting. So I love that you say you got to have fun because I started saying that in 2020. The more fun you have, the more money you make. And people, like, I remember my coach asked me, like, 2018, what do you do for fun? And I was like, work out. I used to say that, too. Yeah. So what do you do for fun now? Everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's all about, it's, if it's not, if it doesn't bring me joy or make me a crap ton of money, I'm not interested. Yes. Yes. I'm really, I'm not interested. But it, joy is a, uh, it's a feeling and it's a vibe that you can have in doing anything. Oh, yeah. I mean. Driving. It's. No, I get. I'm not, I'm easily entertained. Like (laughs) I get joy from like cleaning my countertops and moving my piles around. And then an hour and a half has gone by and I don't even know what's happened. My grandmother called it pediddling. I love it. I'm a pediddler. I love it. Like I could do that for like three hours a day and it's like so gratifying to me. But, and, and most people would say, well, that wasn't productive. You didn't get anything done. And so where is that balance of like, you know what I mean? Right, because it's like, okay, you can't just, because there's a lot of fantasy marketers out there where it's like, I played with my kids all day and took them to Disneyland and then we had popsicles and I made 70 grand. Do you know how that drives me absolutely bonkers? Uh, It is, it it gives me such a rash, but (laughs) anyone who buys into it, now I've bought into it in the health world, okay? Like I've bought the shake weight, I bought that ab belt back in the day, you know, like this has been going on for probably centuries right. this kind of fantasy marketing right but then in the money world it's like people keep doing it because it works I know. and then people go well, I got scammed or this didn't work and it's like but you have to own your part in it you know you have to own your part that okay like I did <laughs> I did fall for this person I'm not giving an excuse for the person who's doing that style of marketing that's not going to go anywhere that style of marketing no. it's it's cheap but it's also, it works. The truth is what I teach in my workbook course that I put out, which was my way of dipping my toe in the water in anything printed. If you saw me behind the scenes, and this is like a course with videos and like a 70 page workbook, okay? This isn't I've like- I've seen you, yeah. But like when I, when I say behind the scenes, I'm talking like up all night, sweating, terrified. Like the most mm. vulnerable thing I've ever done. Yeah, because you, after they print it, you have no control. Exactly. And I, yeah. I was like, then I can't retract it. And mm-hmm. my story's in there. And there, there's, a, there's a whole thing. But it's called make more work less for a reason. I don't say not work. Mm-hmm. But you don't need to be working like that grind. Like I used to work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. It's about intentionally focusing your time on income and joy generating activities and being really smart and resourceful with Mm -hmm. what you do for your particular business to grow it and leveraging, you know, other people to do things for you at times and not feeling like you have to be everywhere and do all of the things. You know, like this business and my podcast, like Project Me with Tiffany Carter, that's part time. I, that's not full time. I couldn't do that. Full, how could I do that full time? I have another business too. Like that's part time. And you're killing it. But it's, I have to be very intentional, but I don't start work until noon every day. I also don't have kids. Okay. Like I have, I do have that, like for me, that freedom in my life. Right. But on the other side, like we talked about earlier, because a lot of people will also use the mom thing as a victim. One hundred percent. And yes. I know, and I love when you speak to that because you can. I I don't feel it's right for me to because I don't have kids. I I do speak to it a little bit, but it's not the same. Doesn't yeah. land the same. Yeah. But it's like okay, yeah, you're right. I 
I don't have kids, but I also, you have no, I also have a whole slew of things that I have to do to even keep myself alive. Mm -hmm. I have a giant nonprofit. I build sex houses for uh, women and children who are sex trafficked. Mm -hmm. I have another business. Like there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. You know, so it's like we can pick up anything and like point at someone and go, oh, well, Kayla's that successful because she's gorgeous and she's so confident. Well, you also had to do a lot of work on all these things and you take very good care of your body. And, you know, it's like. Well, it, and if you're in that energy of going this way, but but I can't have it because of that, you're putting so much energy and fighting for your limitations. What if you just transferred that energy and put it over in here into believing in yourself and believing in your dream and taking action on your dream? So it's like turn it around and be like, what do you, what is it that you want people to say about you on your deathbed? Yeah, like, oh, or what, what do you want your kids to see? Exactly. I know mm -hmm. that I would personally rather see someone who went for it, even if it wasn't some like wild success, but mm -hmm. it's like, isn't that cool that like my mom did that or my dad did that? Like, yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Even if it, like, so what that it didn't turn into some multi gazillion dollar thing. Kids like, don't care about that. It doesn't have to go that far into it. But the point of not having to self-sacrifice in order to have success. Yes. So, yes, I get to start at noon. But you know how I can start at noon? because I am laser damn focused from 12 to about like 4 35 o'clock yeah you know that's your limit those are your laser mm -hmm. do not bother me don't mess with me and I am zoned in it's not like you know oh I do a little thing here and now I eat a sandwich and then I, no in order for me to be able to pull that off Mm -hmm. I'm zoned in and I know a lot of people I'm sure you've had guests that are like anti-multitasking yeah I am not for me, um, I if I didn't multitask, I would be broke. <laughs> <laughs> I have to multitask. So like I'm on a meeting. Um, and if you really watch people like uh, my old mentor is net worth is $100 million. And talk about multitasking. And like, you know, you're talking to the person They're they're walking on a treadmill. And now they're also texting someone back. And then someone comes in and asks a question. Then you answer that question to that person and make sure that's done. I don't know anyone who's super, super successful and highly influential who isn't multitasking and with intention, though. Right. With intention. Well, one of the things I did differently, you're going to love this, is... I, you probably already do it, but with my private co coaching clients, uh, I'm like, I do not go on video and I walk and I do other things while I'm coaching you because I do not like, like I do not feel the most creative when I have to be in this box. I was like, I will completely qu quit coaching if this is what it's going to be. If I'm expected to sit on a Zoom and talk to you like this, like I can't do it. I'm walking, I'm eating, I'm doing all the things like that bring the creative juices to me and I'm like love otherwise it. don't hire me if you can't handle it I had a girl hire me and uh anyway she played, paid multiple six figures and she was like I need you to have your video on and I was like not gonna happen like or else you're gonna get like dizzy because I'm moving so much while yeah. we're on this call and then she's like I don't care I'll get dizzy I'm like okay put the video on anyway she's just signed on for year two but it's funny because like I think a lot of people they hear the guru say this one thing, right? You got to make your bed at 5 a.m. Mm. Don't multitask. Like, and then they take it as Bible, but it's like, you got to find what works for you. And I think you've been a really good uh, example and role model for people that like stop trying to fit into the box that a man created like hundreds of years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like make your life work for you. Like if you want to get up and, and start working at noon, like more freaking power to you. And you don't have to be a morning person. Yes. I've never been one and I'm still not one. Mm -hmm. Like, and I used to think like, oh, you have to be a morning person. Totally. You have to be an extrovert. I'm not. I mean, I, I'm not. I've been trying to get her back on the show for like four years. I'm, right, so. I'm a tough, <laughs> tough, tough to wrangle me. And it's like, you don't have to be any of those things. What you have to be is own who you are. Yes. But a lot of work goes into owning who we are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't want to do that work. And that's why this whole awakening that's occurring is going to to 
siphon out a lot of people who are doing, you know, the circle talk, the fantasy marketing, or there's just, you're only just seeing a surface layer. I don't think there's a tolerance level, a high tolerance level anymore for like surface talk, Mm -hmm. which is beautiful. Yeah. That's why you said the influence, the age of the original influencer is dying. I even watch, because now I scroll TikTok, which is really not good. Because I, first of all, I don't like do my own hair and makeup. Like there's very few things I do. Like I don't like, I actually really don't, if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it because then I have more time for fun things, right? And pediddling. (laughs) And my makeup artist, Jill, we were laughing. She's like, what is happening? There's like all of like Sephora. (laughs) And I'm like, I keep buying from these, I keep buying from these people like baking and like now I have to like bake my face and like all this stuff. And I'm watching these people, but even those people who do those, like I call them like the mom influencers, you know, where like their children are perfectly dressed Mm -hmm. and their lunches are packed. Like, God, if I had a lunch like that, like the sandwiches in the shape of a star, I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. I'm like, this is amazing. I'm like, I had like moldy peanut butter sandwiches. And even them, you can see that they're also now showing more of their messiness. You know, they're showing. That's awesome. Right. They're they're showing more of that stuff, even though I'm sure they didn't start out doing it that way. Yeah. We just don't have, um, we don't have an appetite for being lied to anymore. What would you say to the person who is like, I I think people get stuck in their ways, right? On social media and just in life in general, but specifically on social media, maybe even in their podcast. And they want to start sharing more of those vulnerable moments, but how much is too much? Hmm, That's a good question. I would say... We have to first see how much is too much for you. I wouldn't want anyone to share anything that they're not yet ready to share. Yeah. And it's shocking for people who, you know, listen to my show to know, like, you only know 20 percent. Mm hmm. And that's what I'm comfortable with sharing. Right. And it's not because I'm trying to hide anything, but. I'm not trying to re-traumatize myself either. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there's some things that have gone on where it's taken me time to process. And once I've processed it and I felt like there was a valuable, like, lesson and message in it, then I share it. So I have a good analogy for this. You need to let people into your house and offer them a coffee. They don't have to be welcomed into your bedroom. Yes, And if you're not willing to welcome them into your house, as is every day, it's messy, it's disorganized, the kids are yelling, um, you have a janky sofa, whatever it is. Like, if you're not willing to do that, why would they be willing to be vulnerable enough to give you their time, energy, and money? Mm -hmm. We have to really think about that. I would never expect anyone to pay me or even attend, like, a free training of mine or something like that because that's them giving time Time. and energy Mm -hmm. right and it's like I wouldn't expect them to do that I have to go first I have to welcome you I have to say come you know come here like come in what do you want to drink I've got this and this whether I'm a disaster that day whether my house is cute whatever it may be that doesn't mean though I'm not uncomfortable sometimes Mm -hmm. in fact anytime I I text my podcast producer and I'll go I think I rambled I don't know what I said you have to tell me if it's terrible if it is I will like stay up and like re-record it because I know she'll tell me and it's always the content that does the best yeah well well the audio right it's you're in people's ears and you're really taking up vulnerable like massive real estate up there and they want to be like, they want to know the real, authentic, true you. Like I was telling them earlier, like I do better, like my solo episodes do really good Mm -hmm. when I can just like riff on something because people are like, oh, that's what she really thinks about that. You know, even though those interviews obviously do well too. But um, let's talk about podcasting. A lot of people want to start a podcast. It's like the new blogging. Well, like from back in the day, everyone wanted to blog until they realized how much work it how, was. Exactly. It is a lot of work. It's, that's why I say, well, do you want another business? Because opening up a podcast is not just like 
people, oh, I just want to like rough draft things. I'm like, but why do something just like, it's not a therapy thing. Like it's have an a all reason. in play or yeah. don't bother. I'm yeah. being honest. Unless you don't care if you make money from it. And it's just like a delightful little like side deal, which is totally fine. You know, like there's lots of businesses in Newport Beach and Manhattan Beach that are the delightful tax evasion side deals. <laughs> I love all like the rug stores and yeah. like there's no one in them. Right? <laughs> Laundering. It's amazing. I always laugh. I'm like, that's suspect. And if you have to go, if I really want to make something of this, I'm going to just tell it to you straight. Like either go all the way for it or don't do it. I say no toe dipping. Yeah. You've got to jump in the water. But that doesn't mean sacrificing your health, your family, your joy, working 80 hours a day. So don't go to that level with right. it in your head. All I'm saying is you need to do it proper. You need to be committed to it, excited by it. And when no one is downloading and no one is leaving reviews and no one is talking about it, are you going to keep showing up? Because my show... Unlike, I think yours, yours grew fast. Yeah. I'm I'm a grower, not a shower. Yeah. Mine was slow to grow, but so are multi-billion dollar businesses. Yeah, you, you, mm-hmm. But I, I didn't know one podcaster I was. I didn't even know what a mastermind was. Like, I think you had to explain it to me. Yeah. You were like, someone. Can you come speak at my mastermind? And I was like, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like, I didn't have like, a famous cousin who could do a shout out or I didn't have any of that. So that's part of why it also grew slowly because I wasn't leveraging like some built up like YouTube channel or right. something Mine like that. Mine blew up because I connected with bigger podcasters right in the beginning and had them pod swap with me. And I didn't even know that was right. a thing. Like yeah. genuinely. Yeah. I didn't know. But what I did know is that I said to myself, I will show up for six months and a hundred percent I knew I wasn't going to edit one episode, so I hired someone to do that, hired someone to show me, you know, set up the equipment, all that stuff. And I just needed to see there was traction. Mm -hmm. There was growth. It didn't have to be insane. I just needed to see that we had like an upward trajectory, even if it was small. And then I could reassess at six months. And let me tell you something. At five months, it still wasn't cute. (laughs) Okay? Like comparatively. Right. Right. Um, I did have a five figure sponsor, you know, I did have like some of these things that were nice, but like it still wasn't cute. I mean, it, it was not like other people who were in like my genre or anything like that. Yeah. And I thought, okay, like I'm a professionally trained newscaster. I think I'm kind of funny. I actually know production. I didn't think it would like, obviously out of the gate, I'd be like some superstar, but like, it's like, I mean... I have a shot here, right? <laughs> and like five months in, there was not that great. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow. And I go, well, you said six months. Keep going. You know, you said six months. What are you going to do? And I was like, you got to keep going. You have to stay true to that commitment to yourself because you said show up regardless no matter what. Yeah. And I did. And literally, it was like right after that five month period, then it blew up. Wow. I believe people end up giving up way too soon or shifting gears on their marketing strategy, whether it's marketing, digital marketing, content strategy, they shift it too soon. They either quit or they like, they're zigzagging. How is anything going to catch? Yep. Your messaging too. Oh, well, if I'm talking about this and no one seems to be liking my stuff, my views aren't high. No one's liking it. No one's liking it. No one's like, I should talk about this now. Or maybe I should do this now. Well, you've never given any one thing enough time to really build any traction. Mm-hmm. Lori and I were just talking about that this morning. Like that's the, the, and I think I have totally gone on that same path. Like when you don't get that instant gratification, especially if you've had a business that took off quickly and then you do something else that doesn't take off quickly, you've got to build your grit Mm. up to like just stick it out. And you can only do that if you have a vision, right? Like why are you doing the podcast? Like that's why I tell people like if you're going to go all in, maybe it's not to impact millions of people's lives, but like what will make it worth it for you 10 years from now that you did the podcast? Like what has to happen? That's an interesting point because – 
I've never had anything come easy to me in my life. Mm. And I, I do have people in my life where, I mean, it's almost crazy. Like everything comes easy. They were the best athlete. They're, they're naturally like skinny. Yeah. You know, like they're get great grades, you know, like, and then I see what happens when something isn't working. Cause like, to your point, they don't have that grit resourcefulness muscle built up because and they've always had everything work and if it, if like I what I found for me was actually like nothing came easy to me growing up then I had like a little bit of success and you kind of get late it makes you a little bit lazy on the grit side of things and that muscle will die off but you mm. got muscle memory so once you learn that resourcefulness you're gonna get a stronger muscle but you got to build it back up again you know so I think there's seasons it's making me happy to hear that you that it didn't come easy to you, even though I know it's hard. But I'm just thinking about for my kids, all all three of them, like nothing comes easy to them. And I always tell Chase this, I'm like, I have worked so hard to give them everything, like to give them everything that I never had. So they didn't have to. And then he's always like, God has a plan for them, though. Like if it was easy for them, then they won't live out their true destiny. Like I had a I had to do I had to study when everyone else was partying. Yep. I had to go hit five gazillion tennis balls in order to not embarrass myself on the court, in order to even be like on JV. Yeah. Like, and I mean, it was nothing. Part of it was I'm working up against extreme trauma. Oh. So I'm sure there's that part of it. But like, I'm not like, I'm not that smart. I'm sharp, but I'm not like that smart of a person. I'm not a book smart person. I just will keep working and I'll keep showing up I have that muscles like really built for me also like I don't like the alternative what's the alternative yeah what is the alternative and maybe people need to ask themselves that mm -hmm. what is the alternative if you're comfortable staying right where you're at no judgment on my part if you genuinely feel good with that you can live with that and you're fine with that great wonderful but if you're not you're basically settling, mm -hmm. which I think is a form of self-abuse. Yeah. You're basically saying to yourself, oh, you know, you don't need to do anything more. Like, this is fine. This yeah. is good enough. But why a good enough life? Like, I don't want that said at my funeral. Right. Like, oh, Tiffany, <laughs> Tiffany Carter, she led a good enough life. Like, uh, I that's don't. That's on the obituary. Yeah, that's yeah. not. No. No, like I just recently lost my dear mentor and friend of 21 years. Oh, my God. Suddenly put a lot of things in perspective as these things do when mm -hmm. that happens. And one thing that's giving me any comfort is this is someone who did everything 150%. There was not one minute of his life that this man settled. That's what he taught me. Wow. You know, so that... You know, someone yeah. who you know, like mm -hmm. most people could never have accomplished what he did in multiple lifetimes. You know, that yeah. gives me some solace. But it's like we have to ask ourselves, like, well, what what are we do you want to settle for an OK life? And if that is fine with you, that's OK. But if it's not, you got to make some moves, man. Well, yeah, if they're still listening to this podcast episode. They know they're not. They don't want to settle. They're like, I'm going to write Tiffany a, tw a 25 uh, line scathing email. I love when I get these emails. You're not going to get that. My people are going to love you. It's, they already love it's you. It's when I talk about God and then I talk about like the universe. I've not sworn once, if you've noticed. I have noticed, actually. Because um, I was like, we're going to have to bleep it out. No, <laughs> no, no. I know. I know. I'm media trained. I know. I know. I don't need to. I don't need to swear to get my point across. <laughs> but it's when we like trigger people. It's like someone pleading their case of their victim story yes and like i'm talking wild emails we get of why it's impossible for them to have a different life than they currently have and it's like of course it's impossible if you've really are only you're at like a trial and you're only hearing one side mm -hmm. it's not to say those things aren't factual and those things aren't you know i'm sure reality but like you only are giving one side of the story. Where's the fair balance of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about start pleading the case for the other side? Exactly. For your dream life. My thing that got me to do it is, am I okay staying where I'm at? Mm -hmm. And where I was at, I mean, when I was sick, that was bad. But in terms of like financially, like, 
I was still in the top whatever, like 0.5% in the world. But I um, was void of purpose. Mm -hmm. I I was void of um, creativity and joy and like connection because the corporate world's kind of flat, right? And I wasn't okay with that. So then I had to go, okay, what are you willing to do about it? Mm -hmm. What are you willing to do about it? Mm -hmm. And and stop complaining, like stop complaining and longing and wishing for it, Tiff, or do something, Mm -hmm. make a move. And I and I made a move, and, and I keep making moves. Mm. And now here, right, millions and millions of dollars later, millions of people who listen. And it's like I I see what God. Ugh, I'm gonna get emotional, but what God is doing. I wasn't fully clear in the beginning, and now I get it. It's like people resonate with the trauma in my story, the dysfunctional childhood, the fact that I do manage, you know, a couple of mental health conditions that actually like take a lot of work to manage. Yeah. yeah. And I am not your typical entrepreneur. I'm not. I'm risk adverse. I'm a scaredy cat. I'm an overthinker. Um, and I'm quite lazy. I, I don't really want to say, I'm, but I am. I'm like, a, I'm not a type A. I'm a type C. Like, I'm type chill. You know, like, I can't be bothered. But, like, you want to, I mean, if you want to know an easy way, hire someone who's, like, really successful and is lazy because they found a way, right? <laughs> but I think people resonate with it because we all make up stories. In order for me to have the success here, in order for me to have this amazing like book deal that Kayla has in order to have all these things. I have to look like that. I have to sound like that. I have to be like that. I have to have all these traits. That's not true. Yeah. You just need to be you and own it. That's the work is Mm -hmm. owning it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm obviously like I have a lot of flaws, but like that's what makes me interesting. Exactly. Like wouldn't you be bored? Like, that's why it's boring to watch these people where they're flawless. I, you're making, I feel convicted. I'm like, God, I got to share more of my flaws. Yeah, because you naturally come across just in how you look and your persona, yeah. right? You have that cookie cutter, like blonde California, right? Like beauty look. And then someone else who might like not look like you or sound like you would be like, well, ob- you know. Yeah, obviously she has that. That's why I feel like Oprah resonated with so many people. Right. Drew Barrymore, Kelly Clarkson. Look at all these people who highly resonate as hosts and talk show hosts. Mm-hmm. They they represent more of like the masses, and you can visually see and experience with how they share their vulnerabilities. Yeah. Wow. Well. Now I'm like in my head. Okay. But, (laughs) (laughs) but you know what? I have just loved seeing you shine. And I think the reason why you shine too is you're, you love people truly and deeply. Like you actually care about every single person that listens to your podcast that shows up on your TikTok. Like you really want people's lives to change, even if you never made another dollar from it. Yeah. And you've been like that since the very beginning. So I just want to honor you in that because it's hard to find people like you, you know, so keep doing what you're doing. And, uh, I'm really excited to see what happens because like you having a top, what your number two podcast. Not wild. It's, it's not, it, it's like a knowing. It's like it was already going to happen. Yes, but not five months in. I was like, <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, and I think that it's going to be like a household name situation. Like I'm so excited to continue to watch you rise and shine. So where can everybody come and find you? I would say come over to the TikTok and Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. And then my podcast is Project Me with Tiffany Carter. It's on all the things. You can Google it. Um, if you are highly offended by swearing, there is some swearing that occurs, but it's swearing with passion and intention. <laughs> you know, I can listen to your show and not be so there's, not be offended. You know, there's yeah. there's a solid point to it. Um, you know, I, if you have this on your heart, stop kicking the can down the road and do it. Do something. Mm -hmm. Take an action because even if it doesn't go anywhere, you can at least say to yourself, like, I made some moves. Yeah. 
be proud of yourself at the end of the day. That feels really good when you make moves, even if you're terrified. Yeah. It's like, no, I made some moves. You know, maybe it hasn't paid off yet. Mm -hmm. But like, guess what won't pay off? <laughs> Not making any moves. Yeah, staying the same. Yeah. Okay. I love you. Love Thank you, you for being on. You're welcome.